selling logs to China. Hello, my name is Louis Gaylord, and I've been part of the sawmill industry for the past 40 years. From cutting and scaling logs to sawing the logs into lumber, grading and kiln, drying the lumber, and manufacturing it into hardwood flooring, I've developed a good understanding of our industry. Through these 40 years, myself and most of my fellow lumbermen have made it through very difficult times doing whatever had to be done to succeed. Working long hours and emptying retirement funds to pay bills and make payroll is what I did because failure wasn't an option. When I started my business in 1985, 80% of my lumber customers were furniture plants in Canada and the United States. Unfortunately, since China joined the World Trade Organization in 2001, our North American furniture industry has been almost completely wiped out. North Carolina was known as the furniture manufacturing capital of the world, with almost 90,000 people employed in 1990 to less than a third of that today, with many of those jobs in distribution of furniture made in China. Sadly, China has killed the North Carolina furniture industry, and to add insult to injury, they now distribute and sell poor-quality disposable furniture that ends up in the dump site after three or four years. The furniture industry was the first to go, but all wood product manufacturers are threatened. It's likely too late to revitalize the industries we've lost or are losing, but not too late to save our sawmill industry. Log buyers from China are now paying premiums for our logs and actually placing shipping containers on the logging sites. This is in an effort to steal as many North American jobs as possible. Our logs are being taken to China to be sawn and kiln dried. Much of this lumber is being sold back to us at below market price. How can China pay a premium for our logs, ship them to China, saw and kiln dry them into lumber, and then ship it back to us at a below market price? The only answer is government subsidies. Information from American Hardwood Export Council shows hardwood log exports to China from January 1, 2017 to September 30, 2017 increased 65.6% from the same period last year and is growing rapidly, making it more difficult for our sawmills. I wanted to figure it out, so I did some research with my Made in China computer, made a few phone calls on my Made in China cell phone, and did some calculations with my Made in China calculator. It has always been assumed China could manufacture products cheaper than us because of the low cost of labor. Being a lifer in the industry, I've seen our sawmills become very efficient, utilizing every inch of the log. There's no possible way China can be more efficient than us, especially when shipping the logs across the ocean and back. I decided to figure it out for myself. Using 30,000 feet of logs converts to six containers of logs and two containers of kiln-dried lumber when sawn. Firstly, I will figure out the cost of sawing the logs in China. 30,000 feet of logs at $900 per thousand, 50% premium, is $27,000. Six 40-foot containers with 5,000 feet per container at $1,000 each is $6,000. 30,000 feet of logs sawn at $75 per thousand, a third of our cost, is $2,250. 30,000 feet of lumber kiln-dried at $75 per thousand, a third of our cost, is $2,250, for a total cost of $37,500. If lumber is kept in China, the cost would be $37,500 divided by 30,000, which equals $1,250 per thousand. Two 40-foot containers shipped back to us at $2,800 each is $5,600 plus $37,500 for a total cost of $43,100, which equals $1,436 per thousand in U.S. dollars. If logs are sawn in North America, 30,000 feet of logs at $600, market price, is $18,000. 30,000 feet of logs sawn at $225 per thousand is $6,750. 30,000 feet of lumber kiln-dried at $200 is $6,000. Total cost, $30,750. Taking the total cost divided by 30,000 feet equals $1,025 per thousand. Even if China was paying the market price for logs, not a 50% premium, there's no way they could mill the logs into lumber and ship them back to us at a lower cost. 
it's obvious the industry is being subsidized by the Chinese government in an effort to steal North American jobs. Recently, the International Trade Commission ruled the Chinese hardwood plywood was subsidized, ranging from 23% to 194%. Loading logs into containers and shipping them halfway around the world unnecessarily should be considered an environmental crime. Fifteen of the largest container ships create more pollution than all the cars in the world, 780 million, running at the same time. Not to mention there are 6,000 more container ships, none of which are small, plus another 85,000 ocean-going cargo vessels roaming the seas. The United States and Canada have made attempts to regulate emissions in international waters but have not been successful, as it is too hard to monitor and enforce. Most shipping companies register their vessels in countries that have no regulations to avoid extra costs and monitoring. These vessels are fueled with bunker fuel which is the cheapest, lowest grade of liquid fuel. This thick black sludge contains 2,000 times as much sulfur as the normal diesel we use in our vehicles. 85% of the shipping pollution is in the Northern Hemisphere. Ship pollution has a huge effect on the health of communities in coastal and inland regions around the world, yet pollution from ships remains the least regulated of our global transportation system. China is the largest polluter in the world accounting for 30% of the world's greenhouse gases. Although they say they have developed strict environmental policies, the NASA environment map shows otherwise. China uses more coal than the rest of the world combined. To make matters worse, most of the coal is unwashed or dirty coal, significantly increasing sulfur and carbon emissions. As the rest of the world is shutting down coal plants in 2017, China is building 74 new ones and expanding 46 existing ones. Thanks to improved environmental practices and technological advancements made in North America over the past decade, greenhouse gas emissions have decreased. Unfortunately, China's greenhouse gases have increased significantly more, offsetting any progress we've made. China plays a big role in the global illegal logging business valued at between $52 billion to $152 billion. Illegally, logs account for 10 to 30 percent of the total global wood industry. The crime principally occurs in Southeast Asia, Central Africa, and South America, where an estimated 50 to 90 percent of the timber in these regions is being illegally acquired. China is the primary destination for the majority of this illegally sourced timber. The timber is not harvested in a sustainable way, causing long-term damage to the environment. Most of this material is manufactured into products and re-exported. In the end, honest people get penalized because they can't compete with illegally harvested timber purchased at a fraction of the market price. Chinese manufacturers will pay bribes to corrupt officials in poor countries and are provided with bogus paperwork to export the timber. Once the illegal timber gets in the system, it's impossible to recognize. This material is manufactured into products and re-exported to North America, where it is marketed as sustainable and green. Stealing timber and bribing officials is just the way they do business. We haven't brought up the huge loss of jobs in our countries. Selling the logs to China, we create 40 hours of employment. Sawing and drying the lumber here, we create 232 hours of employment. We manufacture pre-finished hardwood flooring which adds 332 hours of employment. 60 to 70 percent of the volume of the log is made up of lumber, while the rest of the residue and waste are made into paper and packaging, particle board, wood pellets for heat, bedding for farm animals, biomass used for electricity, and even the bark is ground into landscaping mulch. The paper industry relies heavily on the wood chips from sawmills. The Canadian government is investing heavily in bioenergy from wood waste. If there are no sawmills, no bioenergy can be produced. Also, there are a lot of indirect jobs relating to the sawmill industry, like sawmill, dry kiln and heavy equipment manufacturers, machine shops, millwrights and saw filers, just to name a few. The spin-off of losing the sawmill industry is huge. To summarize, in North America we believe in the free enterprise system, where supply and demand sets the pricing. In a normal situation, the landowner should be able to sell the logs to the highest bidder, but in this case, the Chinese log price is artificially high and not sustainable. 
They're paying the high prices to put our sawmills out of business. Since 2001, when China joined the WTO, we have seen our manufacturing industry move to China with no real effort from politicians to stop it. China's leader, Xi Jinping, has made a commitment to keep creating jobs for his people and grow its economy and eventually be the world's new superpower. His modern version of communism uses established industries to subsidize industries that China has yet to completely take over. Communist China won't stop until they have taken all of our North American jobs. It's obvious by China's investments in North America, they are trying to eventually dominate us financially as well. Other than landowners getting more for their logs temporarily, there's nothing positive about selling our logs to China. Lost jobs for us and irreparable damage to the environment is not what we want. Most people in the wood industry are relying on passing their businesses to the next generation, or the business is their retirement. Businesses that aren't profitable aren't worth what they should be, and failed businesses that go to auction don't support retirement plans for hardworking people that devoted their lives to the businesses and supplied good jobs to people throughout the years. The North American philosophy of win, win does not apply when dealing with China. Good, honest people have no chance to compete with China who lie by telling us how the environment is important to them, cheat by subsidizing industries they want to take over, and steal timber from poor, corrupt countries. As long as the prices for the goods are cheap, people will continue to consume them. We have a huge fight on our hands, as the large box and chain stores don't care where the material comes from as long as it's cheap and they can fill their shelves. Unfortunately, people don't recognize what is right or wrong, but only what's in it for me. Our industry is not going to win awards for being flashy or exciting, but can continue to provide good jobs in rural areas for a long time. Loading logs directly into containers at the log yard to take a 12,000-mile journey on a heavily polluting container ship to China, then taking a train to a sawmill, then loaded back into a container and shipped back to us doesn't make any sense. Enough is enough. Although our industry was once big, we now have a small little voice but need to get together and protect it. Let's stand tall and save our industry that has been a big part of the North American economy for the last 150 years. Common sense tells us to saw our logs here, where the skies are blue and the air is clean. Hi, I'm Louis Gaylord. While our leaders spend most of their time focused on getting re-elected, Communist China taking over our manufacturing industries has gone unnoticed. Shipping our logs in excess of 12,000 miles on a heavily polluting container ship to be sawn by the largest polluter in the world should be considered a crime, especially when we can do it better and cheaper here with the logs traveling 50 to 100 miles. China is able to subsidize its industries with more than $1 trillion of income for manufacturing and trading illegal goods. Unfortunately, a large portion of these illegal goods are unknowingly purchased by us. The Global Financial Integrity Transnational Crime in the Developing World 2017 study clearly shows China leads most categories. Surprisingly, illegal logging is the third largest crime, but not surprising, the largest importer of the illegally harvested timber is China. This timber is purchased at a fraction of the market price and the harvesting is being done at unsustainable levels, severely depleting timber supplies, threatening the environment and hurting local economies of developing countries. This much cheaper illegal timber more than offsets the premiums paid for our logs and keeps the Chinese sawmills running. Our industry is full of good, honest, hardworking people who want to continue doing what they're doing. The landowner temporarily wins, so if needed, give them a tax break and keep our jobs here. We know the Chinese lie, cheat, and steal, and in the long term, when our sawmills are gone, they will pay nothing for our logs. Please forward this to your politicians and people involved in our industry. Thank you for your time.